welcome to another Immersiogi ACE courses video. In this video, let's look at contraception in the special situation of just after childbirth. Let's look at what methods you can use and what precautions you need to take. Let's do this through 10 questions and answers. First question then, when do you need EC or emergency contraception? EC is indicated for women who have had unprotected sexual intercourse from 21 days after childbirth. If they had sex within the 21 day period after childbirth, they do not need emergency contraception. It's only after 21 days they need that. Second question then, what options do you have for emergency contraception? Well, you have three. The first is oral levonorgestrel emergency contraception, so that's 1.5 milligram. The second is uliprestol acetate, 30 milligram. These two options are safe to use from 21 days onwards. The third option is copper intrauterine device, which is safe to use from 28 days after childbirth. Let's move on to third question then, and this also relates to emergency contraception after childbirth. The question is, are emergency contraceptions safe in women who are breastfeeding? There is limited evidence, but levonorgestrel appears to be safe. But women who take uliprostol acetate should be advised not to breastfeed and to express and discard milk for a week after they have taken uliprostol acetate. Copper IUCD is not a problem as far as breastfeeding is concerned. That's enough of emergency contraception. Let's now move on to regular contraception after childbirth. Question four then. What methods of contraception can be used after childbirth in breastfeeding mothers? Well, all progestogen-only methods of contraception, that is your levonorgestrel IUS, implants, injections, and the progesterone-only pill can be used. They have no impact on lactation, infant growth, or development. Women who are breastfeeding should wait until six weeks after childbirth before initiating combined hormonal contraceptive. Combined hormonal contraceptives, of course, include your oral contraceptive pill, transdermal patches, or vaginal rings. Intrauterine contraceptive devices and permanent methods of contraception may be suitable for many women. Question 5. Now let's look at lactational amenorrhea method or LAM. Can women who breastfeed effectively use lactational amenorrhea method? As contraception? Yes, they can, but they need to fulfill three conditions. They are that they need to be within six months of giving birth, they need to have amenorrhea, and they need to be fully breastfeeding. Now let's focus on some method specific issues. Question six. When can you insert intrauterine contraceptive device after childbirth? After an uncomplicated birth, intrauterine devices can be safely inserted immediately after birth, as early as within 10 minutes of delivery of the placenta and up to the first 48 hours after birth. After 48 hours, insertion should be delayed until 28 days after childbirth. There are two issues people worry about with immediate insertion of IUCDs, risk of uterine perforation and the risk of device expulsion. Well, there is no evidence of an increased risk of uterine perforation with IUCDs if they are inserted immediately after childbirth. The risk may in fact be less compared with delayed insertion as the myometrium tends to be thick immediately after delivery and therefore the risk of perforation is low. In terms of device expulsion risk, the insertion of IUCD immediately after childbirth is associated with 
a higher expulsion rate. That said, overall there is a higher continuation rate at 6 to 12 months postpartum compared with delayed insertion. So that is a good reason to recommend insertion of IUCDs immediately after childbirth. Question 7. When can you start progestogen-only injectables such as DMPA? The answer is that progestogen-only injectables or POIs can be started at any time after childbirth, including immediately after delivery. There are theoretical concerns that use of DMPA may be associated with an increased risk of VTEs compared with other progestogen-only methods, but any risk is likely to be negligible. Some worry about the potential for unscheduled bleeding, but that is not a contraindication for the use of DMPA right after childbirth. Now let's look at progestogen-only implants. Question 8. When can you start progestogen-only implants or IMPs? The answer is that they can be started at any time after childbirth, including immediately after delivery, although the insertion of IMP immediately after childbirth is outside of current product license, studies have shown that insertion at the time, at this time, is safe and highly acceptable to women. Question 9. Let's tackle the tough nut. When can you start combined hormonal contraception after childbirth? Well, the first thing to say is that all women should undergo a risk assessment for venous thromboembolism, VTE. Combined hormonal contraception should not be used by women who have high risk or risk factors for venous thromboembolism. These include immobility, transfusion after delivery, at or after delivery, body mass index of more than 30, postpartum hemorrhage, post-cesarean section, preeclampsia, and smoking. This applies to women who are breastfeeding and those who are not breastfeeding. Women who are not breastfeeding and do not have risk factors for VTE should still wait until 21 days after childbirth before they start combined hormonal contraception. Women who are breastfeeding, if they have no contraindications, can start combined hormonal contraception after six weeks after childbirth. Question 10. What options are there for permanent contraception? Filchy clip, sterilization and modified pomeroy technique are often used. Of course, there is the option of vasectomy for the male partner. You have stayed on with me until the end there, so you deserve a bonus question. So let's finish off with an SBA, a single best answer question. Here's the question. Mrs. A.T. has three children and is due to have an elective cesarean section for her fourth pregnancy. The indication being breech presentation. While she is having the spinal anesthetic put in, she asks you if you could do a sterilization operation at the same time as cesarean section. As this has not been discussed before, you recommend to her that she has the sterilization operation at a later date once she has had the chance to consider all the implications carefully. She is happy with this plan, but when would it have been ideal to have discussed about concomitant sterilization at the time of cesarean section with this patient? The options are at least one hour before the cesarean section, second option at least one day before the cesarean section, third option is at least one week before the cesarean section, the fourth option is at least two weeks before the cesarean section, and the final option is at least one month before the cesarean section operation. What do you think? Well, the correct answer is D, that is at least two weeks before cesarean section operation is performed. This is the recommendation of the Faculty of Sexual and Reproductive Healthcare of the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists.
Wonderful. I hope you found this brief lecture useful. Make sure that you follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube and on our website acecourses.co.uk because we will be uploading more videos that are of use to you. We look forward to seeing you in Birmingham at one of our ACE MRCOG weekend courses. Until then, goodbye.